Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills bringing you Story Time Tuesday. Now today, I'm thinking about telling you a tale. Now, when I tell you I'm going to tell you a tale, that might be a tale that ain't all the way truth, like most of what I tell on Story Time Tuesday. I know a few old tales that was carried for years and years and years, and passed down through, and most of them I learned from the Hickses over in, over towards Beach Mountain over in there. And I'm going to share one with you today called The Cat and the Mouse. I hope you enjoy it. Now, folks, the way this story starts out, it's about old Jack. And Jack lived way back up in the mountains, up in the head of the holler, on a little old mountain farm with his mother and his daddy and his two brothers, Tom and Will. And their little old farm wasn't much. It was just an old mountain farm, mostly rock, rocky ground, couldn't hardly do nothing with it much. And they had a hard time living up in there. And one day, the boys... Jack and Tom and Will was all out of working in the field. I think he was mowing hay. And their daddy come up and he said, Boys, come here, I got to talk to you a minute. And they said, What is it? And he said, He said, Me and your mothers are getting old and we ain't able to do nothing no more. And we're going to have to leave this farm to you. And old Tom jumped up and said, well, which one of us you gonna leave it to? And his daddy said, Well, I tell you what I'm gonna do. I don't know which one of you to leave it to. So I'm gonna give you each one a hundred dollar bill. And you just take it and stay gone for a year. Don't come back for a whole year. And you just come back and whichever one of you's done the best with his hundred dollars, that's the one I'm gonna leave the farm to. So the next day they got up early, her daddy gave them $100 a piece and off down the road they went. <clears throat> Tom and Will went on ahead and they got down the road a mile or two and they come up on a big mud hole there and they hid there beside the road in the bushes at that mud hole. A little while, here come Jack walking down through there. And he got down there where they was at, and they jumped out on him and beat him up and pushed him in that mud hole, and they took his hundred dollars away from him. And they both run off and left him. Well, old Jack got up, and he thought, my goodness, what am I going to do now? I'm, I'm ruined. I ain't got no hundred dollars, no way to do nothing. What am I going to do now? He said, I just wells to take off and just seek my fortune somewhere else. So he just kept on getting it down the road and he didn't have nothing to eat. They didn't have nothing much to eat and with them. And he'd stop beside the road and eat berries and nuts and just whatever he could find, you know, along the way. Well, he walked for two or three days like that, and he come up on a fork in the road. And he had to make a choice to go the right-hand way or the left-hand way. He couldn't figure out which way he ought to go, so. He thought, well, I'll just take my hat off, and I'll throw it up in the air. And when it hits the ground, whichever way that's a pointing is the way I'll go. So he throwed his hat up in the air like that, and it come down a pointing straight. It didn't point to the right nor the left, straight, straight on. Well, he got to looking down, bent down there and looking through there, and he could see an old wagon road going out through the woods down through there. Back towards an old field. So he took off walking down that old wagon road and got down there a pretty good ways, and he looked off and... Over there on the side, he seen an old house, an old run-down looking house. Looked like it bad shape, just an old house. 
And he went over there looking around, went up on the porch of that house, and he thought, I know they ain't nobody living here. They couldn't live in this old house. It's in such bad a shape. And he walked up the door, and he reached up and knocked on the door a little bit. As a voice said, come in. So he opened the door right easy and looked around. He didn't see nobody in that house. He couldn't see nobody. He said, hello. And they said, come in. And he kept looking around. He couldn't see nobody nowhere in that house. And he said, who said that? And the voice said, I did. He got to looking around and looked down. There's a big old gray cat sitting on the floor there. And he thought, my goodness, where have I come to? I've come to a land that even cats can talk. That cat said, no, no. The story is there's an old witch come by here. And she, she witched me and my sister. She seen how pretty we was and how happy we was, and it made her mad, and she witched us. She turned my sister into a little old mouse and me into a cat. She said, see, there goes my sister right there running across through there, a little old mouse with a little piece of bread in its mouth running across the floor. Jack said, my, oh, my. He said, I hate to hear that. Are there anything I can do for you? So the cat said, yeah, you can. Tonight, the old witch is going to send animals in here on us, and if any of them gets in the house, it'll be the end of us. So Jack said, well, what can I do to help you? She said, you have to keep them animals out of the house tonight. They'll be coming. They can't get in the house. You've got to keep them out. Said there'll be lions and tigers and bears and panthers and wildcats and everything. You've got to keep them out of the house. Jack thought, well, how in the world am I going to do that? Well, he went outside out there to an old crossed up fence there at the edge of the yard and sat down and got to thinking and he looked around and there's a big white oak tree standing up there at the edge of the yard and he thought hmm he went up there and climbed up in that white oak tree and he sawed him off a big old limb about that big around he cut him off a piece about that long and took his knife out and went to whittling on it and he whittled him out a big old club A big old club to use. He could hit them animals with when they come up there and tried to get in the house. Well, he got his club made, and that evening he went up there and sat down on the porch there, and it started getting dark, and sure enough, he looked down there coming, and there's big old tigers, lions, all kinds of big old wild animals coming right up to there towards your house on him. And he backed up there against the wall of the house with his club, and he, he started swinging and hitting and a-batting, knocking them down when they'd come up on the porch. And he swung and hit just about all night. He'd about give out. He thought the next morning, he thought, I had to, he said, I thought I had to have killed a hundred of them things. And it went to getting daylight outside. The sun started coming up over the ridge, and he could see, and he looked out over the yard, and there wasn't an animal nowhere. They wasn't there in nowhere. He said, my goodness. He said, I know I, I know I had to have killed several of them animals. Well, he went, went in the house to check on them two in there, and, and he went in and looked at that old cat, and sure enough, that cat had changed. It had like a woman's hands down there for its paws, and it had a woman's ears on its head. And he said, well, what now? And that cat said, well, tonight that old witch is going to send little animals, possums, coons, squirrels, just all kinds of things to try to get in the house, little small animals. You got to keep them out, Jack. If they get in there, it'll be the end of us. Jack said, well, I'll do my best. So that evening, it started getting dark. 
And old Jack got back up there on the porch where he was at that night before with his club. And sure enough, as soon as it got dark, here come just all kinds of little animals running up through there, coming right straight for him on the porch there at the house. And he started swarping and a-batting and a-hitting, and he just kept them knocked off of the porch all night. He thought to himself that next morning, I've got to have killed a thousand of them things. I've been a-swinging and hitting them all night with this big club. And that started getting daylight, the sunshine come up over the ridge, and he looked around in the yard, and he couldn't find an animal nowhere. They wouldn't want around there nowheres. He thought, my goodness, I know I had to have killed a thousand of them things. Well, he opened the door and went in the house to check on that cat. And sure enough, that cat looked like it was taking the form of a beautiful woman. And he said, well, what now? And that cat said, well, tonight, that old witch, she's going to send all kinds of bugs and bees and insects and all kinds of things to try to get into the house and Jack if you let them in there it'll be the end of us you got to keep them out Jack said well I'll do my best but I don't know how I'm gonna do it with this cure club because I ain't never I can't I can't keep no bugs out with this cl big club so he went outside and he got to thinking and he's looking around and they had a an old shed of a barn over at the edge of the field and he walked over there looking around, and there's a big old plank board up on the side of that barn. He went up there and pulled it off, got the nails out of it, and he started whittling on it, and he whittled him out a big old paddle with a long handle on it. Made a big old paddle like that. So he got up there that night on the porch, up there next to the door, and sure enough, when it started getting dark, here come all kinds of bees and hornets and bumblebees coming swarming right in there on the porch he got that big old paddle and he's just a hitting and a swatting and a knocking like that he done that just about all night and the next morning it started getting daylight sun come up and he looked around he couldn't see a bug nowhere he said i know i killed a bunch of them things last night as many as i swung at well he opened the door and went in the house and sure enough, there stood a beautiful woman. She had cat ears on the side of her head, whiskers on her face there, and she had a big old long cat tail hanging down behind her. Jack said, well, what happens now? She said, well, Jack, tonight's a real test. She said, the old witch is coming here herself. And this is the real test. It's the worst of all. So Jack thought about that, and he didn't know what he was going to do, and it's getting on up in the daytime and up in the shank of the evening. And he's sitting there by the fire, and he got hungry, and he said, well, I'm going to fix me a little bite to eat. So he got him some bacon there, sliced it up, and put it in the pan on the fire, and it was a frying. He got the feeling in his boot, and he could feel his toes sticking through the end of his sock. So he took his boot off and his sock, and... There's a needle and thread there. He got that and put that sock over his hand and started stitching that up to tie up a hole in the toe of his sock. Well, just in a few minutes, the door of the cabin flew open and... <laughs> that old witch said, What are you doing, sonny boy? Jack said, I'm just sitting here fixing my sock. That old witch walked in there come over towards Jack. She said, here, give me that sock. I never could stand to see a man doing a woman's work. Give me that sock to fix it. Jack said, no, you ain't getting it. You stay away from me. Jack just kept on working on his sock, and that old witch standing there, and she looked over at the fireplace, and she seen that pan of meat laying there frying, and she said, she said that meat's a burning. Let me turn it over for you. Jack said, no, you stay away from her. And she ran over at the fireplace and getting ready to mess with that meat there on the fire. And Jack jumped up and ran over and grabbed a fire poker and stuck her in the back and pushed her right in the fireplace. Golly, there's blue smoke and white smoke and then black smoke come up and went out the chimney. And it burnt that old witch plumb up. 
Well, Jack turned and looked, and sure enough, that woman had turned into a beautiful woman. And she said, this ain't nothing, Jack. Just go outside the cabin and look around. So Jack went to the door and opened the door, walked out on the porch and looked, and why, it was the biggest old beautifulest farm you ever seen all around, everything I could take in. There's cattle in the fields and sheep and horses running everywhere and big old fine barns and there's a big old house over here, big old fine house, the prettiest house Jack had ever seen. She thought, Jack, Jack turned around. She said, Jack, I'm, you've helped me and my sister here. You've kept this old witch from turning me into a mouse. And she said, I'm going to give you this place for that. Jack said, you going to give me this place? She said, yeah, I'm going to give you this place, Jack, for helping us here. Jack said, well, I don't want it unless you come with it. She said, you mean that, Jack, for sure? Jack said, yeah. So the next day they got ready. And they went and got him a big, Jack got him a big fine suit of clothes and she got her a big old beautiful dress and they went and got married. They had that little sister, Jack had that little sister mouse in his pocket there. And once a witch, you get witch to a mouse, you can't come back. So the little sister had to stay a mouse. So they went and got married. The little sister, looking out of Jack's pocket there, they got married and went back home. And Jack, a few days later, Jack got to thinking. He woke up one morning. He told his wife, he said, I've got to go. She said, where are you going? He said, I've got to go back home and tell my mother and daddy how good I've done. It's been a year and i got to go tell them how I've done. She said, well, I'm going with you. He said, well, get ready, honey. So they got ready. Jack put on his big suit of clothes and his wife put on her big dress and that little mouse got, they put that little sister mouse in Jack's pocket there and he went to the barn and brought out a big old fine buggy hooked up two big beautiful team of horses and they took off for Jack's home place well they got to getting close there and Jack and Tom and not Jack but Tom and Will they had done got back home and they had their wives with them and they was standing there in the yard, and Tom looked, and he said, Golly, there comes a rich man coming up through there. And he turned around and looked at his wife. She was in an old ragged dress with holes in it. He said, Honey, you get on up there and hide. Get up there under the house. I don't want these rich people to see you. And Will told his wife the same thing, and they both went up there and hid under the house. And, and Tom hollered, Mommy, come here. There's a, there's a big old rich folks coming up the road here. And his mama come out on the porch there and looked down through there and she said, That ain't no rich folks. That's my Jack boy. And she run down there and Jack got out of that buggy and with his wife and give his mama a big old hug and introduced his wife to his mama there. He come over and he looked at Tom and Will and he said, well, how are yous doing? Where's your wives at? They said, our wives is hiding up under the floor there. And they hollered, and Jack said, well, I'd like to meet them. So they hollered them to come out, and they come out, and they met them there. And so later that day, Jack told them all. He said, I'm going to take Mom and Daddy back home with us where I can take care of them. They can't stay here by themselves. Jack said, I don't want this place. I just want to take care of Mom and Daddy. And they, he loaded them up in the buggy, and they all went back to Jack and his wife's place. And the last I seen of them, they was there on the porch. There was five rocking chairs. Jack was sitting in one chair. 
His wife was beside of him in another chair, and his daddy is next to her, and then his mother. And in that last chair there, every once in a while, you could see little sister Mouse sitting there in that chair. That's all a rocking. And they lived happily ever after. Well, youngins, I hope you enjoyed this video today and this little old time Jack Tell story from way back in the olden days. Ain't no telling how long and how old this story is. It's been carried and carried. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope I could represent and share it like I wanted to. Like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you ain't already. Tell your friends about me. And keep a sharp eye out here on YouTube. Because there's a squash pie recipe coming up here real soon. I look forward to seeing you next time.